Hello, I'm the Shopa Guy, and this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Stories, to which I share the experiences and stories of players within the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. And this story right here, man, this story. Coming from Reddit, getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh! and I didn't know the player base would be so toxic. So this post right here came from late 2020. This is recent. Which is very surprising to me because I... I, I didn't really think that the Yu community has been that toxic in the past two years. I mean, there, there definitely is toxicity wherever you go in the community. I decided to get back into playing Yu-Gi-Oh! after re-watching the show. I went to my local card store and proceeded to talk to the cashier about my situation and ask what's good to buy for the meta. I'm assuming a lot of people are hurting because there was quite a bit of people hanging out and playing. Alright, first off I gotta say this. It is a card shop. People normally are hanging out and playing. Not only that, there are a lot of people out there who are very vocal and very outspoken when it comes to the game Yu-Gi-Oh! And of course, it, like, it is a hobby. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a hobby and people are sharing their experience with one another, sometimes a little bit too loud. Like, I went to a card shop where there was a full-blown conversation, louder than everyone else talking. There was like 15 people in the room. And then this conversation between two people is so loud, everyone can hear them. It drowns out everyone else speaking. And so the shop was giving out these Dark Magician Girl promo cards out that were worth $40 or $50 if you spent $30. Uh, this is the uh, like Lost Art promo pack, essentially. So I did that, and immediately people ran up to try and scam me with other cards and trading me booster packs. I googled the pricing immediately for every trade offer. And every single person was trying to scam me over $20 to $30 at least. Oh boy. That's sad. That's sad. Oh, that... Then when I sat down next to guys that didn't try to scam me and open my cards, I proceeded to ask questions about the meta. Okay, that's normal. You're at least speaking to the people there, trying to gather some information. First, I turn around after talking to somebody and I caught someone who was mid-process grabbing a pack out of my tin. I caught him stealing in the middle of the store. Oh, don't do that. That is wow. I asked him what he was doing and he said, Oh my bad, I was trying to help you pull packs. I didn't cause a scene, I just got up and moved to another table. Good choice there. Good choice. I legit heard people mocking me as I walked away saying, I bet he couldn't synchro summon his own private parts. And you don't belong here. And I wish the owner never told him how much the promo was worth. Seems like it's probably just a shop that was full of toxic losers in a cult community. Cult community? Eh, kind of. I wouldn't call Yu-Gi-Oh a cult community. It's, like, it's just a regular hobby community like any else. I'll keep giving Yu-Gi-Oh my best shots, and when I have good competitive decks, I'll go back and hopefully beat some of those dudes. Alright, first off, I will say this. Don't go back to that shop. Don't do it. The Yu-Gi-Oh community isn't all that toxic in the grand scheme of things. It's There's like very bad apples out there that exist that could deter people away from the entire community. But as I said before, in the past two years, there has definitely been a lot more positivity around in the community. There has been a lot of more like self-deprecation going on. When you look at people like uh, like Trip or Pharma or Farfa or Simo or Gage, yeah, there's like elements of toxicity, but for the most part, actually, when you compare what has been going on in the past two years of Yu-Gi-Oh! in terms of how the community perceives itself and how we joke about certain things in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu community compared to what things were many years ago, like 10, 15 years ago, things are so much a lot more better. They really were. Now, all because things are better now, that doesn't mean that we should, like, you know, like, like hand wave moments like this. I will say this, even as a year ago, uh, I just want to tell you people that if you ever experience something like this, move to another store. Like, go online, go on Yelp or whatever, give them a bad review. A bad review, so people are going to walk away from it and be like, oh yeah, I don't want to go to that store. And then, from then on, the owner can have like maybe a culture change. There are some locals that are very inviting and positive. There are some locals that are very uncomfortable. There are some locals that make people just don't want to even play Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. 
locals vary, you know, location to location. And in this scenario here, I say, if you ever go into this situation, move to another store. Move to another store. Maybe you'll find better people there. This reminds me of a... Oh, man. Okay, so when I was... um, All right. This, okay, sad story here. So when I was a kid, I was at a swap meets. And this was a swap meets around 2006-ish. 2006, 2006. It was um, Yu-Gi-Oh! During peak DM era, like, at least in the States, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, when I was watching and playing the Yu-Gi-Oh! game, like, super mega casually, uh, the game hasn't even reached the point of synchro summoning, uh, not even, like, GX. Like, I was at a swap meet with my dad shopping for Yu-Gi-Oh! cards before GX came out, and so, like, people are hyper-competitive, and, like, we, we want to see, like... It, it, it was really, it was, it was a very different time, very, very different time. And when I went to a swap meet, my dad bought me a All of Us a Tormentor Egyptian God card for forty dollars. Once again, this day back in like two thousand six. All right, of course now you can get an Egyptian God card for like one dollar now, but before man, like it was so cool for a kid to go get an official. Yu-Gi-Oh! All Bliss the Tormentor card in this swap meet. And you know what happened? After my dad bought the card, I was walking around on my own, because you know, you know, like I'm a, I'm a big kid, I can I can walk around on my own. And then a person came up to me. And then this person uh traded me a fake wing dragon of raw. A fake one. I didn't know it was fake till years later. But like I looked at it and in the bottom right hand it didn't have the logo in it. The material was off, the color was off, the words were different text. And I traded a first edition Yu-Gi-Oh card from over a decade ago, Albus of Tormentor. I was just a little kid, below the age of 10 years old. And someone scammed me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, someone scammed a kid who was not even 10 years old yet after their dad just bought them a $40 card. A real $40 card back in 2006. And that was terrifying. Uh, it was terrible. And moments like that is what kept me away from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Until much, many, many, many years later. And so now, like, I myself, I'm still hesitant of going to swap meets or buying stuff from there anymore after that, after that experience. But... That sadly does still happen nowadays. Um, there still are moments like this where people are trying to scam you. If you watch any of Team APS's videos where they talk extensively about how there are, or they do skits about how there are people out there with folders and they're trying to scam people out for money. It, yes, I get it. We live currently in a hustle culture where we're all about like grinding out and making as much money as possible. Like DIY, right? That's how it is. The hustle culture, everyone nowadays is an entrepreneur. Heck, I'm technically an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur. Every YouTuber is technically an entrepreneur. I get it. But don't do that to little kids. Don't do that. It's messed up. Um, don't, don't gatekeep. Don't make people uncomfortable. Don't do this thing over here, man. This blew my mind here. Who the heck grabs another person's pack without even asking permission? If you're interested, you could the guy could have asked, like, hey, is it okay if I can like help you out with the pack opening? Uh, like it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> it is incredibly uncomfortable. Um, keep your hands to yourself unless you ask permission first. Unless you ask permission. By the way, from what I get from this here, this person came in alone. Came in alone. And no doubt, like this this shop was very predatorial. It's very predatorial. Uh, hopefully, you know, since then, since this moment here, the shop has been a lot more better in its culture. And stuff like this is terrible and should not be allowed in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, the gatekeeping, scamming people for money. I understand that we live in a certain culture nowadays where this is kind of, like, accepted. But still, just don't do that. Like, have, like, have some sense of morality in you. Invite players. The youth community has been actually getting a lot more popular, a lot more bigger. We're still far, far away 
from the Pokemon and the Magic Gathering community in terms of population wise, but I think we're going to get there. And if we don't do stuff like this and we're more inviting towards others, then I think at one point in the near future, in the very near future, like within the next 10 years, honestly, Yu Gi Oh! can be as popular as those two franchises. And so, uh, thank you for watching the video. If you have any stories you want to share, feel free to comment down. Also, feel free to hit like and subscribe if you want to. You totally don't have to if you don't want to do so, but really cool if you did. And so until next time, see you guys later.